Hey guys, so in this video, we're going to be talking about prefix sum array and difference array. So these goes hand in hand together uh, when you're learning about any type of uh, prefix sum array data structure. And in this video, we're going to specifically talk about the one dimensional version of the prefix sum array and difference array. So let's start off with the problem of the prefix sum array. And the problem is as follows. So we're given an array of n integers, and we want to do the following operation q times. We want to output the sum of all elements from indexes L through R inclusive, but not necessarily the same uh, each time, right? We, we might take the range from 1 to 3, then 2 to 6, for example, and so on. And Basically, the standard approach of doing this problem right here is, once again, the problem is take the sum between some range of values in an array, right? So the standard approach that most people would go through would just be for each operation, use a for loop from indexes L through R inclusive. And what you would do is you would maybe, you know, use a variable to keep track of the sum. And then finally, output the sum variable. And what that's going to look like is something like this. We might have some sum variable starting at zero, and we're going to have a for loop that goes from L all the way to R, and we are going to print the sum at the very end. Now, in between that for loop, what we're going to have is sum plus equals A of I. So basically, we take the individual elements between L and R, and we add it to our sum variable. So the thing with this is that our problem says that we're going to do the following operation q times. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to wrap this around another for loop that runs q times. And for every time, we might take in a different L and R value, but we're still really taking, you know, we're still iterating through that range. So this right here is the standard approach. Let's analyze the time complexity for this problem. So what's the worst case for this standard approach? Well, the worst case is that every time we must output the sum of the entire array from one all the way to the length of the array. And so what's the time complexity of that? Well, the runtime would be O of n times Q, right? For every operation Q or for every query Q, we have to go through the entire array, right? So that's going to be n times Q. Okay, so now let's talk about the solution and how we might be able to make this a little faster than the standard approach. So the idea is that we can manipulate the, the array to speed up our operations. So Basically, we're asking ourselves, can we manipulate the array to speed up our operations? And we should note that the array elements themselves do not change or transfer to another array. So when we're doing that standard approach, none of the elements are really being updated. So how can we manipulate our array to help us solve our operations faster? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to say let pre of i, where pre is another array, equal to the sum from 1 all the way to i. So the sum from 1, uh, 2, 3, all the way to i. And essentially, how do we compute the sum from L through R inclusive using this knowledge here? Well, the idea here is that we do the following operation, pre of R minus pre of L minus 1. So you might be thinking, well, this is kind of random, right? Um, this doesn't really make any sense. Well, I'm going to expand this out and I'm going to show you that it actually does make sense. So first of all, let's establish that pre of R is equal to the sum from one all the way to R. So one, two, three, so on, all the way to R. And we can also say that pre of L minus one is equal to A array from one, two, three, all the way to L minus one. And since we know that L is going to be less than R, 
we know that when we do pre of r minus pre of l minus 1, we can kind of remove some of the elements in between. So what, we're end, what we end with is pre of r minus pre of l minus 1 is equal to pre of or the array l plus array l plus 1 all the way to r, right? So essentially, you can kind of think about it as take the entire sum up to r and remove all the stuff before the left range, right? And so all that overlap at the very back behind L is getting removed. Okay, so let's talk about how do we actually generate this prefix sum array though? We saw that, you know, we could use this idea of pre of R minus pre of L minus one, but how do we actually generate this prefix sum array? The idea is that what we can do is we can say pre of one is equal to array of one, right? We know that this is already the case because it's the sum from one all the way to i, in this case, i is one. Then let's look at pre of two. Well, pre of two is just array of one plus array of two. Well, we know that array of one is the same thing as pre of one. So why don't we just replace it with that? Then let's look on to pre of three. So pre of three is array of one plus array of two plus array of three and so on. So this would be for any index, but we're just talking about three for now. Well, what you notice is that the pre the array of one plus array of two is the same thing as pre of two. So we could replace it with that. So you might be noticing a pattern here. So the idea is that pre of i for any index i is equal to pre of i minus one plus array of i, right? It's the previous sum plus the current guy, right? So use the sum previous uh, prefix sum value and the current element to get the current prefix sum value, right? So just the whole idea is pre of i is equal to pre of i minus one plus array of i. Okay. So let's look at an example here. So let's say our original array was these values here. So 1, 5, 9, 2, 3, 8, um, 10, 7, 4, and then 6. So when we generate our prefix sum array, it's going to look something like this. So 1, 6, 15, 17, 20, 28, 38, 45, 49, and then 55. So what you should notice is that at every index, you can kind of match it to the previous previous index plus the current element. So it's just the idea of pre of i is equal to pre of i minus one plus the current element. So with this, for each of the queries, we might say, for example, once again, the formula is pre of r minus pre of l minus one. And so the idea is that, let's say, for example, we wanted to find the sum from index 1 through 10, so the entire array in this case. Well, what we would do is we would say it's 55. And that's pretty easy to get because pre or pre of r, right, which is 10, is 55, minus pre of l minus 1, l being 1. And since we are actually going to one index this, Basically, what's going to happen, it's, it's going to be 55 minus 0. So when we do that, we pretty much get 55. The next example that we have is the sum from 2 to 7. So the sum from 2 to 7 is actually going to be 37. And the way we get that is we just take pre of 7 minus pre of 1. So that's 38 minus the 1 there. Next, we have the sum from index indices 4 through 8, and the sum from there would be 30. So hopefully that makes sense. And once again, the idea is take the entire sum up to r and subtract everything between 0 and l minus 1. And we want to do that because we don't want any of the values behind l, right? So we just want the values between l and r. Okay, so this is some pseudocode for the prefix sum array algorithm. So first, we take the array values and make sure we one-index them. 
Then what we're going to do is we're going to generate the prefix sum array, and it's using a simple for loop that goes from one all the way to the array size. And what we do is we say pre of i is equal to pre of i minus one plus array of i. Then for each of the queries, we're going to say for each query between l and r, we're just going to print pre of r minus pre of l minus one. So the query or the operations that we have, which is the sum between l and r, is going to be o of one time. And we can say that's o of one time because simply we only need to access two positions in the prefix sum array for each query. Now, what happens if I want to update or change a value in the array? Well, then basically it's, that's going to be o of n time because what needs to happen is the prefix sum array must be rebuilt. Okay, so now let's talk about something that will actually solve that problem for us, that whole O of n time for updating a value. So this is actually called the difference array, and we're gonna see exactly why this is called a difference array soon. So once again, the problem is, given an array of n integers, do the following operation q times. Add an amount c, to all the elements from indices L through R inclusive. And so after that, output the array after all operations are done. So let's talk about the standard approach first. And the standard approach is as follows. For each operation, use a for loop from indexes L through R inclusive and what we're going to do is add C to every element in the range. So that's a pretty obvious way of doing this difference array question, right? So basically just loop through each of the values and then add C onto that range. So what is the worst case for this? Well, the worst case for the difference array or the standard approach for the difference array problem is that every time we have to update the entire array. So that's O of n right there. But then we have Q operations to do, right? So we have to do this Q times. So the final runtime is going to be O of n times Q. And that's pretty slow. Um, for any specific algorithm, um, that's around O of n squared, right? So can we really do better? Well, the whole idea or the solution for the difference array problem is that we keep track of the differences between each of the elements. And although this is a little abstract, we're going to see exactly how this is going to work out for us. So once again, we have difference of 1 is equal to array of 1. And we need this so that we know the initial value. Now, this isn't totally necessary if we're going to 1-index the entire array. Then for each i greater than 1, difference of i is equal to the array of i minus array of i minus 1. So you can kind of see why it's called the difference array now. It's just the current value minus the previous value. And previous in terms of not the difference array, but the array values themselves. Okay, so basically what we have now is how do we retrieve the state of the array if we have the difference array now? So let's think about this. Um, note that the prefix sum array of the difference array is the original array. That seems really abstract right now, but we're actually going to show you an example of how this actually makes a lot of sense. So if this is the case, right? then all we need to do is run the prefix sum array algorithm on the difference array to get the final state of our array, right? Array being the original form of the array. So how do we, you know, keep track of the differences, right? Or more importantly, why do we do this? So let's look at an example of why this is the case. And the example is as follows. Here's the original array, and the original array is just going to be a bunch of ones. And if this is a bunch of ones, the difference array is just going to look like this. A one followed by a bunch of zeros. 
So this is pretty much our difference ray because once again, remember, the difference of i or diff i is equal to array of i minus array of i minus 1. Now from there, the difference array is going to look something like this. And if I change the value of the fourth index to a 2, basically what's going to happen is that elements from index 4 and onwards are all changed by the single changed value in the difference array. Because once again, if we apply the prefix sum array algorithm on the difference array, we basically get the original array. Now, if I add a 2 there, basically what happens is everything gets added by a 2, right? So it's going to be 1, 1, 1, and then a bunch of 3s onward. Now, what happens if I add a negative 2 at index 8? Well, elements from index 8 and onwards are all changed by the same value. And we have effectively added 2 from indexes 4 through 7, but only two operations were required. So you can see now, you can kind of see everything is a 1 except the range between 4 and 7. So what I did was I just added a 2 at index 4 and then subtracted a 2 from index 8, right? So that's pretty much the whole idea of the difference array. Now, what happens if I add a 5 there? Basically, if I add a 5 there, everything onwards in the original array after I use the prefix sum array algorithm is also affected as well. Now, what happens if I add a negative 5 at the end? Well, it kind of cancels it out, right? If you're adding a 5, everything onwards gets added a 5. But by subtracting a 5 there, you're kind of canceling it out almost, right? So that's the idea of the difference array after you've used the prefix sum array algorithm on it. So here's a bit of pseudocode. And so the idea here is that first we get the array values, and once again, you want to one index them. And then to generate the difference array, we basically have a for loop that goes from one all the way to the size of the array. Once again, apply the formula diff of i is equal to array of i minus array of i minus one. And then for each of the queries where they want us to add c to the values l through r, we basically want to do diff of L plus equals C, right? And then say diff of R plus 1 minus equals C. The reason we do plus 1 is because the range is inclusive, right? We want to do from L to R inclusive. So if you want to cancel it out, right? If you want to, like, for example, cancel out the added C, we do subtraction of the C value at R plus 1. Then to generate the final array, we basically use the prefix summary algorithm where we say array of i is equal to array of i minus 1 plus diff of i. So let's look at the running time for the difference array algorithm. So first, the update or the change values is basically going to be O of 1 time because only two elements need to be updated. Next is the query. So how do we get the actual value of the entire array? Well, it's going to be O of n time because the difference array must be changed into the normal array by using the prefix sum array algorithm, right? Array of i is equal to array of i minus 1 plus difference of i. And that's pretty much it for the prefix sum array and difference array algorithm.